So Wolves fans this week are probably getting a bit of a striker deja vu. If you rewind back to January 2022 under Bruno Large, Wolves were uh, not far off fourth place, not far off sixth place. We, you know, we could have had a late push towards European places, but we ended up loaning out Adama Traore in January of 2022. Got no replacement in for him. We signed Jaquinho and Kawabi, I think, but at the time, obviously, they wasn't at the calibre of an Adama Traore. Jaquinho come okay, but at the time, everyone was really frustrated. We didn't bring in any backup. And due to injuries, we petered away that year. Ended up coming 10th in the league and everyone was scratching their heads and thinking what could have been. But obviously financial fair play restricts Fosun and they did not want to spend big money or even bringing in bringing a loan that January. And it really frustrated the Wolves fan base and we find ourselves in 2024 in a similar position. After the 3-0 loss against Newcastle the weekend, the injury list is racking up for Wolves. And after in January, us not signing any players as backup for our forward positions and with Sasha Kaladzic and Fabio Silva going out on loan we just knew with any type of bad injury luck we were going to be in big big trouble and with us in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup and with us not far off Europa well Europa Conference League places if we get seventh Wolves fans are getting a bit frustrated now let's go through the injury list we've currently got there's five key ones two are really bad at least a month and three are being assessed and let's see if we've got the backup to actually cover them if the worst were to happen and all five are out for a while. So let's go through them and let's see the damage and see if Wolves can have a strong end, end to this season. Let's start off with Cunha. He's the big one. He's been pretty much our best player this season, arguably up front, provided a lot of goals and assists. He went off injured the uh, not long into the Brentford game, about 20 minutes in. And after the game, Gary O'Neill was very optimistic that it wasn't too bad with his hamstring but then it turned out that he could be out till at least the 30th of March which would be the Aston Villa game we miss him a lot and um, there are rumours that he might return for the bench against Coventry on the 16th of March because his progress is going much better than everyone expected because obviously he's a really fit lad but let's hope that happens so he's he's one of the key ones that we really need back and we miss him dearly. We haven't really got a replacement, or the ones that are meant to be his replacements are, are injured too. So, Cunha is one of five, and he's probably one of the biggest ones we are missing. So, let's hope he can return sooner rather than later. Next up, we've got Huang Yi Chan, another key player to our season. He's had a fantastic season in terms of goals. Since his return from the Asia Cup, he hasn't seemed right. He got injured in the warm-up to the Sheffield United 1-0 win, but still played anyway which was a bit of a concern. And the reason he still played is because we haven't got backup. He was covering the injured Cunha. And uh, yeah, he just hasn't looked right. And then against Brighton in the FA Cup, he was terrible first half, ended up coming off. You could see him stretching out his hamstring. It wasn't right. He didn't feature in the Newcastle game again. We thought he weren't going to be that serious. But then Gary O'Neill came out after the Newcastle game and said he'd be out for up to six weeks. We're not going to see him till April time, which is... Absolutely gutting with how many goals he's contributed, but he just, as I said, he just hasn't seen right. So it'd be nice to get him back before the end of the season and hopefully he can help us, especially if we get deep in the FA Cup. A shame, really is. Um, but again, no backup for him. So we need him back, old Chani. Now these next three coming up are less serious, but let's go on to Pedro Neto. Started the game against Newcastle, came off at half-time as a precaution, and all these injuries seem to be hamstring. Obviously, he's had a terrible injury a few years ago. His kneecap was out for a while, and then he was out with a hamstring injury this season, and he's been good since he come back. But he just looks absolutely exhausted. Um, obviously, another key player. He's, his game is an explosive player, pace. And, yeah, we, it was just a precaution, and let's hope he'll be fit for the Fulham game. He's being assessed. He should be. And we need him, God, because if he's out as well, having Huang, Neto and Cunha out would be an absolute disaster. So let's hope he's fit. And again, another key player. You saw his assist for the goal at Spurs. He come on against Brighton was really good. So let's hope he can be fit for Fulham. But we can't keep risking these players. We'd rather him just be out for a week or so than pick up another serious injury and be out for about six weeks. So hopefully... Neto will return for the Fulham game. And now we're on to Jao Gomez. Again, look, reason, tight hamstring. It always seems to be the injury with these players. He did not even make the squad for the Newcastle game. Now, since he's returned 
from his suspension that he picked up in the FA Cup game against Brentford, he's been incredible. Like the, the two goals he got at Spurs, his energy in midfield. We particularly really need him for games when we're underdogs away because his dirty work and the way he sets us off on the counter attack is brilliant. We do have good cover in Tommy Doyle and Bubakar Traore if he is injured, but still, it'd be really good if Gomez is available for the Fulham game. He's currently being assessed. And yeah, another one who's been a key player for us this season, all season. Um, but again, we're very lucky we've got cover for this area. But fingers crossed he can make the team for the Fulham game after missing Newcastle. What a player. And last but not least is Jose Sarr. So he went off at half-time as well in the Newcastle game. Bentley replaced him. I think he collided with the post was the reasoning. And again, another thigh injury <laughs> with a recurring theme here. And people criticise Jose Sarr for his distribution, which I get. But with his feet, he is awful and he does give me kittens at times. I always feel like he's going to make a mistake with his feet. But he's pulled off some really good saves this season. You think of Everton away, we won 1-0, heroics. Made a really good save at Spurs away recently in that 2-1 win. And he's a good shot stopper. He really is. And Bentley is his backup. Oh, I thought Bentley had a really good game on his debut away at Man United when we lost 2-0. Um, but... Again, he, he, he's not very convincing, Bentley. We've got Tom King as third choice. So hopefully Jose Sarr is fit because we do need him for this running. And I'll be honest, I'm not that confident in Bentley. Bentley. So he could be back for Fulham, Jose Sarr. Again, it was probably a precaution against Newcastle because it felt like the game was done at that point. So that is uh, the, the update on Jose Sarr. And let's hope he's in goal against Fulham. So in summary, Cunha and Huang are the worries. They're the two key players from this season. They're the two going to be out the longest. The other three should hopefully be back for Fulham. But it has shot us in the foot a bit. Bringing in no backup is going to affect our season dearly. And we've just got to hope that they recover okay, especially Cunha, who's probably going to be the first one back at the two serious injuries. And let's just uh, hope we don't get any more injuries because we want to have a really good end to this season. We're punching above our weight, obviously, but... The FA Cup and a push towards Europe. I just hope the fact that we didn't bring him back up and the fact that we've got a really small squad is the reason why we don't have a really good end to the season. It could be such a shame. I know uh, Jeff She come out and said that we've got to have the mentality we've just been promoted at the beginning of the season because everything that went on with losing Lopetegui and getting Gary O'Neill. But Wolves fans don't want to hear that, do they? We were in a good position. Let's hope for the best ending possible. Please like and subscribe if you're new. Please comment down below your thoughts of this situation we find ourselves in. And hopefully we can get a positive result against Fulham. And hopefully we've got enough people in to put out a really strong team. Cheers for watching.